Hello again, my name is Hugh and welcome to my channel and my chair. As you saw on the thumbnail, today's project is actually me getting back to some bolt turning which I haven't done now for about 18 months at least. So yeah, um, in September Jane and myself went on a little break down to the West Country here in the UK and we spent three lovely days in Bude in Cornwall and on the Tuesday night we went out for dinner with some friends of ours but that will be in another video and on the Wednesday I spent the day with a good friend of mine um, Jane went to do a bit of shopping and I spent the day with Mark Beckett or the gentleman woodturner as he's known. Now the reason for the visit is I'd started to turn the back of one of these pieces in fact this one and I was getting nowhere fast so I rang Mark and said look can you give me the better? Can I have a refresher course, please? Because my muscle memory had amnesia and I just couldn't get a cut properly and all the rest of it. So, yeah. Mark said, by all means, mate, come on down. So he did. Uh, and I'll put a picture of Mark on here now, just in case some of you don't know. And that picture was actually taken at the Chestnut, Chestnut Weekender uh, in July. So I took two blanks down with me, uh, the one I'd started, uh, the sycamore, and um, Mark said, right, well, we'll practice on the one you've started, and then we'll turn the other one. I said, fine, you're the boss. So that's what we did. So as you can see, it's got some lovely colour on the back and on the front. Now. As I said, I have two blanks, because this one is an order, and that's going to be sprayed black with ebonite and lacquer, and then I'm going to be doing some centrifugal uh, paint using the Joe Sonia paints again. So, when we got to do the second one, which is that one, again, a very pretty piece of wood, but when we turn the front, we saw that. Well, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it's got flame in it, it's got figure, it's got chatoyant. It's one of the nicest pieces of sycamore I've ever had the privilege of turning. So that one was also supposed to be painted and then centrifugal. But Mark and, my look, Mark and myself looked at each other and just went, no. Um, I can't paint that. It's too good. So that second one, I'll just be turning out the middle and finishing. So I messaged the person who ordered both of those. And I said, look, you can only have one at the moment because um, I can't paint the other one. He went, okay. So I've got another bit of wood which I'll be turning that into a 15 inch um, centrifuge platter <coughs> excuse me so Mark didn't video any of me turning because he was watching what I was doing whilst he was coaching me but he did put a little bit of uh, video up of me sanding so it's only 45 seconds I'll speed that up and I'll put this next so yeah I need to get changed, get out in the workshop. These will be going on my vacuum chuck. So that's just standing seal at the moment. So I'll be using some abrasive paste on that and then probably chestnuts, uh, microcrystalline wax on there. And then the same on that. So finish the back off first, turn the middle out there and then um, 
my few crystalline wax. So, I've rambled enough now. Sorry. <laughs> Once I start, I can't stop. So, I'll see you in a second. Once I'm changed, I've already set the vacuum system up, vacuum chain uh, chucks up, but I'll show you how I attach them. Alright? So, I'll see you in a sec. Bye. I've got my six inch vacuum truck set up. Um, that's the Venturi pump that creates the, the vacuum and it's hooked up to my compressor. So it does, I've tried it just to make sure everything works on a scrap bit of wood and it does. So, but the compressor does kick in. So if it does, I'll just turn the volume down. Um, but what you do is on the back of it you put your dovetail jaw chuck onto that which is an adapter and you screw that in there and then place that in there once the chuck jaws are located in the mortise you then lift it and put this into the tailstock and then bring the tailstock up to the vacuum pump and what or vacuum chuck. What that does then is make sure that this is central. So let me get that set up. It doesn't have to be over tight because obviously this is the one that's going to be doing the work. And now just manhandle this into there. Bring, bring the chuck up put the tailstock up to there, lock it down, screw it in just a little bit to seat it on the rubber rings and then turn on the pump. And I'm reading I will be turning the volume off so as you can see that's really nice and simple so all I'm going to do on the back here now is give it a polish I don't know if you can see it, but that is a beautiful shine. And there's the other side. Um, you can see this better once I turn the other piece, turn it round to take the, the bowl section out. So, yeah, I'm going to put that aside. Put the other one up here now in exactly the same way. And polish that, and then I'll bring you back for the next stage. Okay, this one is the one that's going to have the centrifuge uh, Josonia paint on it, and the other one is just going to be left natural. So 
I'll be using the chestnut ebonizing lacquer and I've been shaking this for a few minutes now so lays to zero here we go I can let that tack off for a bit then put another coat on it then that's going indoors for 24 hours because it said on there for best results to be left to harden for 24 hours to achieve maximum hardness before adding anything else so I won't bother showing you the next coat it's going to be exactly the same as that so I'll see you in the morning cheers Hello. Oh, this is the following day. Um, as you can see, I've got my tail stock up, quill fully extended um, for support. This is on a three, four mil um, mortise, and to get the effect I want, I'm going to be spinning the lathe at 2,000 RPM, and I don't fancy this flying that way. So which is why I've got the tailstock support and it is quite firm. So what I'm going to be using are the Joe Sonia iridescent paints. Uh, blue, red, green, violet, turquoise and gold. And I'll put all of those in the description below and a link of where you can get them from um, Emma, the tiny turner on her website. Um, I've mixed them up individually and I've also used the flow medium to thin them down because obviously I want to get paint from there out to here um, they are quite thick in their, in their raw state so tip for you if you're doing multiple colours then it is best to put the bottle um, behind the thing because that's one of them and that's the other and they look identical the first one I showed you was turquoise and the second one was violet so right without further ado let's have some fun with some paint I have spun the lathe up to make sure it is safe at 2000 RPM. Okay. Brilliant, just what I was looking for. Okay, let that dry for a couple of minutes and then add the next one. What I'll do is I'll turn the camera off in between while it dries and then um, bring you back.
Now the last colour, I always put this one on last, it's my favourite and that's the gold. In between each coat I've been using a hot air gun on its low setting just to help dry the paint a bit. But it is 70 degrees in here at the moment so. Right, last one. Oh, there you go. The gold always makes the difference. So, that's it for this session. This is now going to take 24 hours. I'm leaving it uh, because the Joe Sonia paints come out once they're totally dry. Now, I know I've used a heat gun, but you'll be surprised at the difference tomorrow when it'll be time to take that out and then it transforms the whole piece but no I'm really happy with that so thanks for watching so far um, and I'll see you in the morning but before I go there is a shield around here because uh, obviously paint's going to go everywhere and it's just made out of some underfloor um, packing from uh, when my son had a wooden floor put in and some bits of old scaffolding board I chopped up and screwed these two so it'll all come apart flat pack so it's not bulky I'll see you tomorrow cheers hey Lord. well now time this is all dried and the colours have come out and they're gorgeous so freshly sharpened the 3 8 bowl gouge. I'm just going to take the raised section off first before I take the bowl out because I don't want to go in here and then risk skating back. After all, it's been a while since I've done a bowl. Speed will 650. Second. Forgot that. I'm going to turn the bowl round now, the headstock round, so I can get in. Okay, so I'll be standing from 120, 180, raise the grain, 180 again, 240, raise the grain, 240 again, and let's see, see where we end up. Two inch discs under. Speed, 500. Here's the noise.
was that was another trick that Mark showed me when I was down with him is to 180 uh, mets resand 240 mets resand and that is silky smooth so finish is going to be the same as on the back <coughs> which is going to be wood wax 22 so, let me just get that ready and I'll bring you back leave that tack off for a minute and then buff it out beautiful okay let me get this off get the next one on and we'll take the middle out of that one I'll bring you back in a sec okay face shield back on Seven thirty. Okay. Hello. Well, here we are. This is the first one, which is Sycamore. Um, let me just check. Fourteen and a half by two, and the bowl is four inches wide. Use the rain. Sorry, Andy. And I like it. That's the back. Very nice piece of wood. And I'm sure the customer's going to be happy with that. And then the second one. Here we go. Isn't that just beautiful? As I said in the workshop just now. There's the back, that's the side shape, and this one finished a fraction under 15, and the bowl is four and three quarters and about an inch deep. Um, yeah, I love, love this piece. So, I've got a big thank you to say, and that's to Mark the gentleman wood turner um, for getting me back on track and giving me the confidence again to tackle some bowls uh, or platters thoroughly enjoyed it and I do love turning them so I'll put some short videos up of these on a turntable so hopefully the, all the grain in that will come out and you can see the centrifuge bowl as well <coughs> excuse me uh, and I'll put some stills up as well so thank you for watching sorry this one's been a bit long but you did get two 15 inch well nearly 15 inch platters out of it um, if you've liked it give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down either way leave a comment please I do read them all and I reply to them all Next week will be another two bowls. I'm trying something new, so we'll see how that goes. Um, 
if you're not subscribed, I don't know if I've said this on that now. Oh, my head's full of cotton wool. If you're not subscribed, you can click on my link at the bottom and subscribe to there. Click all on the notification bell. And um, YouTube lets you know when I upload a video, which is a Thursday morning. So, all the new subscribers, Jock and Varian, thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. All you oldies, you diehards, you originals, as ever, Jock of Ariane as well. So, all that's left for me to say now is, please take care, please stay safe, I'll see you next week, for another couple of bowls, and, well, <laughs>